This week, we're reading Wild Magic by Tamora Pierce, otherwise known as Let's Address the Eight Story Elephant. In the room? <laughs> <laughs> Hi readers, I'm Jordan. And I'm Katie. And welcome to Not Another Heroine Season 2, the podcast where we break down the best and worst fictional heroines of any genre. (laughs) Because that's what we do now. Want to see what's next on our TBR list? Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Instagram for a sneak peek at upcoming content or to help us pick our next book. Welcome to Wild Magic <laughs> by Tamora Pierce. There's a... Okay. Backstory. Yeah. So, Katie, you've read this... You read the Alana series, which I think Tamora Pierce is more famous for. Mm-hmm. And I read that as a like early adult. So oh. I didn't read it as a kid. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this series, it's called the Immortal series, is a like companion series to Alana, mm-hmm. set in the same world, uses the same characters. Yeah, it's called like the Tortal Quartet or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, I first saw this book at a Scholastic Book Fair <gasps> in elementary school. <laughs> Throwback. <laughs> it would have been like two thousand. It would have been like two thousand or nineteen. Yeah, two thousand or two thousand one. Dang. And this book was published in nineteen ninety two, so it had already been out for a while than i am yeah (laughs) by a lot whoa (laughs) um so there's some things that are distinctive about this book and not in a great way because it's definitely because it's a little bit older there is some dated language in here Mm -hmm. that i'm sure like you will pick up on if you read it as an adult or i don't know if you read it as a child because it's definitely marketed towards like Mm preteens. yeah and that like sweet spot of like 10 to 13 when you're like first developing your tastes and reading Mm -hmm. and like going off the deep end into chapter books that's like a very specific like era (laughs) exactly you might not notice it if you read it if at that age which i didn't pick up on it because that's the age i read it in Uh, but as an adult it's quite obvious and we're talking about like how we're describing skin tones for example of certain characters like she straight up says the blacks. Yeah. And like several times. Yeah. I cuz that's one of the bigger things. So not it's not the elephant in the room, but I feel like it's a, a elephant adjacent mm-hmm. maybe. Um so they do talk about slavery in this, but in a very like reductive, overly simplistic way. And I kind of wonder if she like goes more in depth into the slavery issue in a different series in book three of this series she does oh okay because that's what was kind of off-putting at the beginning of wild magic was she just kind of says like he's a free slave and then that's it and it's like why did we even need it's to- like it's like old u.s history textbooks yeah or probably current u.s history textbooks <laughs> in the south uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep god fucking irritating um anyways <laughs> so there are like things like that uh that will they'll come up as we kind of go through the plot in yeah. general but the big elephant in the room is the fact that there's spoilers here so um mute or fast forward to some point um yes but like i feel like it's a spoiler like you need to know yes because it didn't feel like a spoiler when jordan told me it felt like a this is obvious required information <laughs> Okay, so you hadn't read it. So did you see that coming? I didn't. Oh. At all. (sighs) Yeah. So that's what makes it feel grosser. And so uh, explain to readers and then we'll we'll discuss it a little bit. I want to preface this by saying that I loved this book. Wild Magic specifically, I probably read it 20, 30 times. It was like on my always go back to read certain scenes. The copy I have now is this is like the same version, but my original version fell apart. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the Scholastic Book Fair version yeah. is like dead. Because um, I liked it too. I read, so I've read the first one so far, the second one, and then just started the third one. And I'm in love with, like, I wish I had read these when I was like that 12, 13. It's perfect for kids. Yes. Um, but <laughs> big but <laughs> rereading it as an adult, I would now change that statement because yes, the pacing, the word choice, and everything is is great. However, the main character is a girl. Mm-hmm. She's thirteen years old in book mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. She has a mentor figure that she meets in book one, who is described as a man in his late twenties, yeah. like twenty seven, I believe. Like late twenties, yeah. Because he hits thirty, I think, in the second book, mm-hmm. or like yeah, yeah. And by book four. They have a physical relationship. 
Mm-hmm. They have a romantic physical relationship and they like, I think get married or the equivalent in this universe. God. There are so many things wrong with that. Yes. Like, especially in a book marketed towards 10 to 12 year old girls. Yes. And I think the part that is like more, um, not nefarious, but like sinister about it is that I haven't read up to book four yet. So these are like my thoughts as I'm reading this. In the first and second books, you get no indication whatsoever that he has any kind of like latent feelings for her, that they're, that this will morph into something. And so when Jordan mentioned that that's how this series ends, I was like, what the actual fuck is happening? Because it feels like a very genuine like mentorship relationship. He, you know, is just helping her develop her magic, like learn, be okay with having like, relationships with people and trusting people to take care of her it feels very genuine and so it's almost more sinister that that's where this ends up is you go from mentorship very like kind of healthy relationship to like what the actual fuck yes that exactly so i will say that if you read this book as a standalone Mm -hmm. it's potentially okay yeah but knowing the universe knowing the full four books this is not okay this is not a children's book this is this plot line should never be in a book marketed for that age group it shouldn't be in a book marketed for an age group in the 14 to 18 year old range Mm -mm, no it's just not okay and so you said that there weren't any like hints of that Mm -hmm. so i have a theory and before we started recording (laughs) i really want to tell you this theory so (laughs) badly she was so good about not talking about stuff i held it in (sighs) so there was a there was a few reviews on Goodreads about how like this this problem with the book could have been easily easily resolved by either making the mentor figure whose name is like Numer Numar uh, younger, mm. or making Dane Dana Dinah how did we say uh, Dane Dane yeah. Dane older. That's a very easy thing to do, and you can do it within within reason to make their character like archetypes make sense. Yeah, but my theory. Is that in 1992, she probably wrote this book in the 80s, like drafted it in the 80s. That makes sense. Um, YA as a genre wasn't a thing. Uh, I'm not a publishing historian. This is just like my... (laughs) This is a little tidbit. This is just my like observations of being a reader for, you know, 20, 30 years. So when Tamora Pierce wrote this book, I assume that maybe she didn't write it for the audience that it's now catered to. Mm. I'm wondering if Dane was meant to be like 17 or 18 years old or potentially even older, but she had so much success with the Alana series being marketed to younger audiences. I wonder if this series was like rewrapped and like edited to be marketed for children and the original like characters were meant to be for more of an adult audience. Interesting. Yeah. Cause that's what I struggled with. Like even you telling me that's where the series ends. I still can't even like conceptualize how this fourth book is going to go down that you go from this very like distinctive, like mentor relationship into something more like it's where I'm like struggling. Cause it feels very like mentory, just like a, 13, 14 year old girl who's like going through hormones and like maybe doesn't know how to have appropriate, like not interactions with men, but like can't, doesn't understand maybe or is like, what the fuck is happening to my body? (laughs) There's some devices throughout the series that I I think are an attempt to explain that away. Like Mm. like Dane's backstory and who she actually is. Like, because they kind of hint at it in this book is like, oh, like, who's your dad? Don't know who your dad is, huh? Mysterious dude with horns, huh? Um, (laughs) (laughs) I low-key loved that whole, because her last name means like Sarah's daughter. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's something that's kind of glossed across in a lot of fantasy of like women out of wedlock and having like a more of a woman focus instead of like the man focus of it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, ah, Sarah's daughter, even though it's kind of sad. Yeah, it's (laughs) meant to be derogatory. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But it's a good point though. And I think that speaks to like some of the good points of this book is how strong the female characters and how many strong female characters. Yeah, because what I liked the most on that point is like, this is a book I'd want. So I'm torn because I'd want kids in this age frame to read this because I think Tamara Pierce does a really good job of not making it seem that outlandish that women are doing these crazy things. Like, so Alana is like a knight. She's, you know, the king's champion or something. And we have these like women who are doing jobs that are traditionally like male coded, but everyone's like, oh yeah, I, I guess it's a little weird, but like, 
that's just our kingdom. Like, I just love that as a concept instead of like, I feel like Georgia R. Martin specifically is like ultra focused on these women being in male coded jobs or roles and like that being weird to every person they interact with. And it like kind of overwhelms every interaction action they do. And it's like, okay, like I fucking get it. Like she's, you know, Brienne of Tarth is a woman knight. Like, cool. I fucking understand. <laughs> but like in this, it's just like, yeah, she's a woman. Kind of weird, but <laughs> it's neat that like in this world, it's a like they're in the midst of a cultural shift of yeah. like women taking more like male dominated tasks. And it's like seeing the weirdness for everyone, but it's like slowly becoming okay. And like we can see that in the last, you know, 50 to 70 years in our country. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I like. I don't know. That's one of the things I liked about it. But then it just feels icky when it's like poisoned by this, you know, fourth book. I'm just going to pretend like it, like I'm going to read it, but then just pretend like it didn't See, happen. It, this is this is why I'm mad, though, because when I read these books, I loved that. Oh, I yeah. loved like 10 year old Jordan was like, oh, of course, she's going to fall in love with her teacher. And of course that they should end up together. He is 30. She is not even 18. Uh... Like. So if childhood self is romanticizing yep. like that relationship, what are other 12 year olds doing? Like what example does that set? Exactly. Cause I feel like in specifically like American media, I don't know about like other countries, but we do have this kind of like romantic rosy lens on this like kind of teenage girl, older man Ugh. relationship. And like, I fucking hate it because it poisons all of your relationships with like male figures. So it's always that kind of like question in the back of your mind of like, is this going to get icky or can I actually trust you to take care of me? And it's damaging to other men who yeah. want to be mentors and teachers, but have this like cloud of other men fucking it up. Exactly. Like you can't get right, basically. Yeah. Ugh. So- I'm torn. Yeah. So this is the elephant in the room, um, and it's a mighty elephant, and, like, we can't even, like, grapple with it. Like, this elephant is, like, eight stories tall. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what to do with it. And him. if you, like, so if you read, if you go to Goodreads, yeah. this book has, like, 80,000 reviews, Jeez. and it's, like, 4.3 stars. So it's beloved. Um, and I think it's because, like, 90 Five percent of it is fine. It's great, yeah. like for many, many good reasons, which we will get to later. But this one character, like this one aspect, the the one star reviews that I read, like had other negative points, mm -hmm. valid ones. But I don't think you can overcome this. Yeah, and I think that's a good like kind of controversy conversation mm -hmm. point of like, do we need to leave these books in the past because of like these poisonous? you know, the 5% of them that is like really damaging or do we like continue to read them as like a, a warning or like a, we talk about this because it's bad or because this is something you need to be like, look out for, or is it something that we just like leave behind and find or something new? we fucking rewrite it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> like, that's what I mean. Like this is an easy fix. Make Dane older, make Numer younger and bam, it's fine. You yeah. can still have a mentor teacher like dynamic because obviously that is a romance plot in yeah 50 percent of all the romance <laughs> ones we yeah. read yeah. but like update the book mm -hmm. just rewrite it change some slight pieces here and there it doesn't even require that much change no and that's what's like crazy about the whole concept too or just like make her have more romance with one of the sub characters and any of the other parts of this like there's plenty of like people her age that she interacts with that like i was expecting the romance to like pop up with and then it didn't and i was like oh what's going on Think of all of the current contemporary fantasy romance authors right now. Mm -hmm. They probably grew up reading Tamara Pierce books. Yeah. Right? Think about all of the 500-year-old fucking male hero leads with Ooh. their 18-year-old naive young girl who needs to be saved by 500-year Dark Lord. Talking to you, Sarah Mack. <laughs> um, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Like, did this... Is this the book that started it all? <laughs> We found the root of the trauma because <laughs> it's it has an interesting kind of conversation, too, about like uh, revisions to not history, but like that's kind of the broader context of this is like, do we revise things or do we, you know, have like disclaimers like the uh, Looney Tunes do where it's like this was written in an era of like this was the norm, like, please see it from the view of someone in that era. 
But it's like, is that still damaging? Like, is that enough? Or do we need to rewrite it? And like, what does that mean for us as a society that we're like rewriting all these negative things that happened? Like, yeah, because you can't forget about them. You can't yeah. just sweep them under the rug. And because that prevents you from recognizing them in the present. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, like this, the relationship in this book or in this series, we should say, isn't a product of its times. It's just wrong. It's yeah. wrong in every time. Yep. So I think in, it's those situations where it's just blatantly wrong mm -hmm. that we need to look at fixing it yeah. so it can continue to be enjoyed. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's kind of what happened with the George R. R. Martin, like his books. Daenerys was like fucking 10 or 13 when she married the mm -hmm. Khal Drogo or whatever. And in the book or in the movies or TV shows, basically movies at this point, but <laughs> they just made her older in mm -hmm. the like it. Still felt a little bit like gross, but it felt gross because she was like baby faced 19 year old, mm -hmm. not really ready to go off with a bunch of Rough Riders. Or I don't know what that phrase means. Rough Riders. I feel like it's not good. I don't think so. I don't want to take a stab at it. You can Google that. Um, I think the interesting point that you're making, though, is that was never like it was kind of romantic but it was always looked at like she's being sold into marriage versus yeah. like in this series it's the development of a romantic relationship with no like negative things surrounding it yeah Eesh. it just makes me so mad because this book was so good like i smashed this out in like four hours yeah this like, is an easy read especially if you're an adult reader coming back to it yeah like, and that we're talking about a lot of bad stuff but it's still enjoyable as a read it was excellent like and that's kind of the positive note so you got all like we addressed the big elephant but like let's talk about why it's like still something that's worth reading like the pacing of this book is like textbook like the the example that you compare all others to like it's so easy to read and i feel like some books recently that we've kind of like tried to tackle like they're kind of hard to read. Like you struggle a little bit to like go through the sentences, but this just feels like you're like watching it in your brain. Like you don't have to put any kind of like effort into it. You're like, this is enjoyable. This is just like, I'm vibing right now. <laughs> and there's some like very abstract kind of creatures that are described in this book. And you, you know what they you look get like. It. Yeah. It's very easy. Like it's like, it's a brain dump. Yeah. <laughs> you're just like, I'm just here like hanging out. I just out. hit this image of like, just being at like a USB cable, like plugged brain yeah. to book. Like that's what it feels yeah. like. Yes. It's, oh God. Oh, it's good. <laughs> but fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I'm so mad. <laughs> so I, I think I would understand um, if people don't want to read along, yeah. don't want to listen to these books. I, it's sad because I feel like this heroine is, really relatable and yeah. really done well mm -hmm. it's just this one dynamic which you know if you're a preteen girl you're gonna love it and you're not gonna recognize how wrong it is oh <sighs> maybe just read the first three because uh, we don't get any ickiness in the third book right? there's there's some ickiness and it's actually done well and i wonder <laughs> so it's there's starts to be rumors of like people uh, questioning their relationship and at that time it's completely platonic and innocent yeah but I will say that Numer gets like very heated in his defense. Like he feels like he's being attacked probably because he's starting to have like yeah. inclinations. Um, mm. Yeah. See, cause that, so maybe just read the first two books. Cause the first two are like, you don't get anything like yeah. no hints whatsoever. Like that's why I felt like I had a blindfold ripped off. Like this is bad. And it's like, what? <laughs> I was just like hanging out. Like, you know, 13, 15 year old has like a cool mage, like, an older brother guy that's like helping her and then it gets yucky. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just if you don't feel comfortable with like where this goes, the first two books are still like safe. Or if you haven't read other Tamor Pierce books, oh. go back and read Alana because that's an example of like age appropriate relationships yes. and them developing like correctly. Yeah. But like for, for perspective, right? Dane is the same age as Hermione in book two of Harry Potter. When she starts interacting with adult men and getting these descriptions. Yeah, I don't want that. So read other Tamora Pierce books yeah. and pretend these don't exist if it if it if you can't get over that and mm -hmm. read these. Which is just so sad. Like I'm I kinda got beef with Tamora Pierce. Like <laughs> like why did you do that? <laughs> I don't know. Which makes me wonder if she like had as much control over the editing and publication. Yeah. This is why I want to believe my theory that Dane was not meant to be thirteen years old. Yeah. In this book. We'll just We'll just accept that. That's <laughs> Yeah. Tamora Pierce, 
this is a cry out to you. I know. Because that's the other thing, too, that has kind of like conversational implications is like what responsibility do authors have to kind of like come to terms with the things that they've like written that are maybe questionable now? At a minimum, if you're writing for children, yeah, you have a fuck ton of responsibility. Yeah. I'd say the publishing house has even more responsibility. Mm -hmm. Like this definitely should have came with like a one, two page note from the author publishing team of like, hey, yeah. <laughs> let's kind of talk. And I know they're on their like third or fourth like iteration. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what the covers look like now. There might be something like that. I didn't because I have the I bought it on Kindle, so it might be a little bit different, but it, it's the newest version and it, it didn't have Nothing. anything like that. So maybe like the third or fourth one will have like a little preface, but <sighs> man, because they're just so good. That's why I'm like so <laughs> mad. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> All right. <sighs> we're going to we're going to hop off our angry hate train. Yeah. I mean, it's not even angry hate. We're just disappointed. Yeah. Uh, confused. Yeah. <laughs> like <And> hurt. <laughs> when we come back, we will get into the actual storyline. Dane is an orphan of sorts. She has a pretty tragic backstory. It's so sad. I thought what was really well done is we don't get all of the tragic backstory right at the front. Which is exactly how a 13, 14 year old kid who had gone through trauma, like they're not going to fucking trust anyone. Mm -hmm. They're going to be like a feral, like, I don't need to fucking tell you anything, bro. <laughs> and that's how she acts at the beginning of this. And, and like, she's oh. a little combative. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> how do you say the horse master's name? I Wana? say Anwa. Anwa. An Anwe. Anwe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a lot of weird names. <laughs> yeah, there kind of is. Uh, Anwa. Um, she's like kind of a no nonsense and she's like, I'm going to offer you a job. Like I need someone to help me. I'm this like horse herder, horse master. Yeah, she, so Anwa is the horse master mistress for the Queens writers. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so she's gone South to buy some ponies and she needs an assistant. Because mm. ponies are mean. Real mean. They are so mean for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> they have Napoleon syndrome. <laughs> That's cute though. <laughs> yeah. Um, but she meets Dane at the festival thing because mm -hmm. she's gone like two days without anyone wanting to take this job and then in pops dane yeah she's and like girl <laughs> we get we get that slightly uncomfortable description of dane uh yeah. i'm glad you didn't read into it the way i did no. um i probably didn't read into that description when i was a kid uh yeah i don't think i would have either because i read it as like shithead 13 year old that you like kind of want to like beat up but in like a stop being a shithead like you have no reason <laughs> exactly but she's got a long bow and yes. she knows how to use it mm -hmm. so she demonstrates it she has an affinity for horses mm -hmm. and then i actually like this so uh she's like oh how, eleanor was how old are you 15 <laughs> <laughs> i like it too because she's like sure <laughs> and then she pulls out her magic powder and she's like poof how old are you <laughs> That's a lie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what is that The um, from the Murray show? Like, the lie detector test has determined that was a lie. <laughs> Those, I watched that way too young. Um, Anyways. I don't think I ever watched that. Really? Mm -mm. Oh, we just had the, like, your TV automatically, like, connects uh, to 13. So I watched some things I should not have watched as, like, a seven-year-old. Haven't we all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, Dana's, like, 13, yeah. probably. I iffy? Yeah, and I was like, okay, I guess I'll hire you. We'll see how we get along. She's like, I may not like you at the end, so I'll make sure you get another job if you need one. Mm -hmm. I also like the fact that Oana or Onwa is like immediately impressed because Dane just like hops into this pen with a bunch of like wild horses and she's like, you guys are going to listen to me. And they're like, oh my God, like we're going to listen to her. <laughs> just, it's so cute because like Dane has this like magical sense with animals. Yeah. And, like, everyone knows it but her. She's just like, oh, I just talk to animals, and they listen to me. That's fine. It's like, that's not natural. No, not at all. And Anna's like, why is this bitch talking to the horses like they're people? Um, She's like, I can't even do this. What the fuck? Yeah. But it works. Yep. So she hires her, and then they, like, set off down the road with mm -hmm. a herd of ponies. Yep. Oh. I cannot imagine <laughs> the stress level of traveling uh -huh. with, like, 50 fucking ponies. Nope. Nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love Cloud. Everyone needs a cloud in their life. Uh, he kind of reminds me of Fala Falada. It's from... a she. What? It's a mare. Oh. Yeah. I just kind of got like androgynous, like 
kind of annoyed with you, but I'm going to stick with you till the end of time. But I'm boo, <laughs> like overprotective, like older sibling. That definitely does. Okay. I mean, we can roll with that. That's <laughs> fine. I had no idea she was a girl. <laughs> yes, but I think it's that kind of speaks to how well she did the the perspective switching. Mm. So like this is written third person omniscient. Mm-hmm. And so you kind of get the, the perspective switches like from character to character to character pretty flawlessly. Yeah. Um, I didn't even notice. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it, you just read it and you're like, oh, that makes sense. So you get like animal perspectives at some point. I love it so much. And they're not human. Like they like they have like an otherness to them when yeah. she's writing it. And I'm like, that, that makes sense because you wouldn't have like a typical male or female human thing attached to a That's horse. That's true. Yeah. Because like horses don't really have gender roles. I mean, maybe like a little bit, but like probably not none. as much. They're just horses. Yeah. Ponies. <laughs> <laughs> and they just like kind of go about their business. I imagine like a camping trip with like a too. grouchy older sister. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what the relationship is. And I feel like Dane even like kind of remarks on that. She's like, she doesn't like to talk to me in the morning until she has her coffee. So I just don't talk to her. Yep. <laughs> it's like same. Uh-huh. <laughs> And things are going pretty smoothly until... They're not. <laughs> and, it, like, violently not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, it, it seemingly comes out of nowhere. I was, like, kind of, like, whiplashed. I'm like, oh, fuck. They're, like, not having a good time now. <laughs> no, like, legit scary-ass monsters. Yeah. Um, do you want to describe these things? Because they horrify me in a not good way. They horrified me as a child. Like, I couldn't unsee these things. Yeah. So as they're traveling south, uh, Dane gets this sense of, like, otherness, like, dark, bad. Like, I feel like if you're hiking alone somewhere and you feel like you're being watched. Yeah. That's that sense I think Dane is. Apparently, it's always a mountain lion. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not to trigger any going hiking. <laughs> yeah. When you feel that, there is a mountain lion somewhere watching you. <laughs> No, thank you. Mm-hmm. At least in the Pacific Northwest. Well, the equivalent here is much scarier than a mountain lion. <laughs> uh, honestly. So they see this black hawk kind of fly in the distance coming towards them. And it's being chased by a herd pack. A flock? Flock. A flock. <laughs> flock. Of these um, horrific fucking... <gasps> they're called storm wings. Yes. And so they are gigantic silver birds, but their upper half, so like they have no arms, but they have the torso and head of a human. Absolutely the fuck not. And extra sharp teeth. And they smell like decaying bodies because they eat dead people and they feed on fear. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> so, so great. And they're like known for like swarming around uh, battlefields because like they can't eat anything else but like dead things. Mm. And so they smell gross, they're covered in blood, and their feathers are like actual steel, like sharp-edged steel feathers. <sighs> and so this flock of storm wings is chasing this little black falcon hawk thing. And Dane and Anua are like, oh, I guess we better help the hawk, because that makes sense. Uh, didn't Anwa like, no? She's like, oh, no, like, we need to take oh, down those. Oh, probably. Yeah, because eventually we understand why she knows this yeah. random bird that's it's just flying. flying for its life. <laughs> so they start attacking the storm wings. Yeah. And meanwhile, the little hawk, like, flies into the marsh and hides. And mm-hmm. they kind of defeat the storm wing flock. Yeah. Except it, for one. Yeah. Uh, What is her name? Zane? Zane Bitterwings? Yes. Who total bitch from the beginning i'm like who the fuck is this chick <laughs> like wicked witch of the west yeah. she she legit yeah, yeah, says yeah, yeah. like i'll get you my pretty ones or something <laughs> yeah. like that like i'll get you one day and then flies off. well and dane gives her a gigantic middle finger she shoots an arrow through this bird's eye <laughs> i th- that's what i love so much about dane is she has these moments of just like Big balls, 13-year-old, like, get fucked, man. (laughs) She doesn't think twice. She just shoots this bitch (laughs) in the face. It's like, um, maybe let's, like, think about consequences really quick. (laughs) Nope. So, and it doesn't kill her. So Stormwing flies off after, like, threatening her. And then Anna was, like, panicked because we have to find this hawk that has disappeared, disappeared in the marsh. And so Dane's like, well, I'm really good at finding lost animals just because I'm good at that. So let me do that. That's a skill that everyone has. Yeah. (laughs) And, and she does. She finds the little falcon and his arm is broken. Yeah, he hops out of the little log under oh. her hands and he's like, please save mm. me. <laughs> I just, it made me want a pet hawk. I know. But also birds kind of freak me out. Yeah, because, I mean, they're yeah. birds. <laughs> they're just so other. Like, 
That's why I feel comfortable eating them. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> like chickens are like tasty and also like you're, mm, I feel less comfortable eating cows, yeah. for example. Yeah, because they have like lovable eyes, but chickens like Mm-mm. they have no thoughts except like anger. <laughs> squawk. Squawk, squawk. <laughs> Is that what chickens make? What's that? Cluck. They make clucking noises. I don't know. I'm not sure. I've been around chickens for a while. Like I helped a close friend with her 4-H chickens. Oh, no. Mm-mm. They're cute. They shit all over you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this falcon. <laughs> anyway, this hawk. Uh, His arm is broken. And Dane tries to nurse him back to health. Yeah. And doesn't work at all. Like, he's dying. And I really enjoyed the fact that she kept trying to look into the hawk's eyes and kept getting dizzy. Yeah. That was a nice touch. Uh-huh. Because that's when you get the first inclination that, like... I know she has some kind of something, but like this has to be some kind of magic something. Cause like she can talk with all the other animals and you kind of get more and more hints that they're like conversating. I know that's not a word, but you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but this one, she can't. And so you're like, what the fuck is wrong with this bird? Like, is this not actually a bird? And then it's not actually a bird. No. Well, <laughs> and she makes that point too when she goes and she pulls the hawk out of the log, like, oh, this is not a bird. Like, yeah. I don't know what this is. It looks like a bird. Sounds like a bird. It's not a bird. Yeah. Because he also didn't want to eat meat. And she's like, I have never in my days. It's like, girl, you're 13. <laughs> so Anna was like, maybe you should cook the meat for him. And Dane's like, bitch, please. <laughs> she's like, what? <laughs> this is an animal. Yeah. <laughs> I just love the fact, too, that Anna at no point was like, let me just you know, Explain inform. <laughs> what's going on here. Yeah. She's like, no, I'm just going to watch this. <laughs> I don't know if you got the sense because Tamora Pierce does a really good job at like describing different groups of people. Like she's mm, like different mm-hmm. like tribal regions and cultural regions. And I just pictured Dane as being from like Appalachia. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Because she's like she's from like Snowdale or something. Yeah, like and up it, in the mountains, kind of hick town. It's yeah, a hundred percent just the like freaking like hilly. I'm a girl, so I wear skirts, but I also hunt for my for my dinner. That's the other thing. So there's this like story arc that she's wearing dresses the whole time and she's like, This fucking sucks. And then Anwa is just like, Well, why don't you wear pants? And she's like, That's an option. I can do that, yeah. <laughs> so she definitely grew up in like the American South yes. or Appalachia. Yeah. N- not even the, the like specific specifically yeah, Appalachia. It is. A- <laughs> yeah. Because I think she even like talks wrong and they have to give her like grammar lessons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and that kind of annoyed me though, because she talks wrong only when it's like obvious. Like yeah. and it's easy to do. Like yeah. in other scenarios, like her, her speech is fine. So, I mean, we're just going to It would be that. hard to fake an Appalachian like dialogue. I, honestly, because no, you can't. Mm-mm. Incomprehensible. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah. So Hawk is dying. Mm-hmm. Dane is like a little heartbroken because I'm nursing this little birdie and he's not doing well. And so I was like, I'm going to call for backup. Yeah. And backup arrives. And there's like creepy guys like hanging out everywhere. And so like she has to like ward the camp. Yeah. On- so Anwa's got like the gift is what they call magic in this world. Mm-hmm. And it's like everyone's got a slightly different gift. Mm-hmm. Um, and Anwa's is like protection magic to some extent. Mm-hmm. And like being able to tell like lies from truth. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is kind of like an overarching theme of the story is the fact that Dane doesn't have the gift. Yeah. But she can do these weird things with animals. She got something different. Yeah. And it's kind of her like chip on the shoulder thing because her mom always wanted her to have the gift. I know. I love that too because I feel like that's a very common kind of like uh, emotional trauma we all share of like not quite living up to something your parents wanted you to do. And you're like, yeah, I'm bitter about it. <laughs> and she gets really defensive whenever yeah. it's brought up because Anna's like, hey, I think you might have like the gift or something. She's Dane's like, like, I ain't got no fucking gift. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, girl, you're talking to animals. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you got something. <laughs> yeah. So that happens. Yep. And Anna's like, I'm going to use my magical gift and call for backup and see who's nearby. And then if you've ever read the Alana series... I kind of like squealed when Alana came like galloping through and like, cause at first I was like, who the fuck is this person? And I'm like, oh my God, it's Alana. (laughs) Like Alana is such a larger than life uh, heroine. She's like a classic heroine. Yeah. And I love the fact that she, even as an adult is still kind of like awkward. Yeah. (laughs) She's a little, (laughs) my favorite scene. So like, uh, Dane is watching this like group of knights gallop up to their little campsite and she's like, who's coming? And like the lead knight is this golden armor on a golden fucking horse. Very impressive. And then, and then the knight gets down and Dane still thinks it's a dude. And the knight gets down and is two inches shorter than Dane. (laughs) She's like, wait a second. What the fuck? And then 
takes off the helmet and we realize it's Lana with her purple amethyst eyes, which is very distinctive from the Alana series. Yeah. Uh, doesn't she like immediately complain? She's like, God, this armor is so fucking like, <laughs> my ass is like on fire. <laughs> yeah. Like she says something like I'm paraphrasing, but not that much. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is what Alana first utters. It's just, I love that. Like she's not like, you know, princessy. She's like, I am just an awkward, you know, whatever person and I'm a knight now and I don't really know what to do with that, but <laughs> I like killing things and <laughs> here's my shiny sword and my big horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of <laughs> Yep. So I a couple critiques I read is that there is a lot of like characters going on. There's a lot of action going on, a lot of names thrown out there. So yeah. if you haven't read the Alana series, you're unfamiliar with this, you might be confused if oh, you're okay. reading this. I think if you're reading it as a kid, you'll probably like just not notice. You'll skim over and be like, oh, I don't understand what that is. Doesn't matter. I'm going to keep reading. Yep. <laughs> as an adult, it might be a little like jarring to yeah. see so many characters with such obvious backstories that you don't get. Yeah. And there's like weird military units too. So there's like the Queen's Riders, which are a group that are kind of like forest rangers ish, mm -hmm. I feel like. But then there's also like the King's Own, which is like part of the military, but not. And then there's like the King's Champion. Like it feels kind of like overwhelming because it, it was a hot minute since I've read a, a, the Alana series. And then I read this and I was like, I vaguely recall what all of these it's, are, but I'm just going to skip past it. <laughs> Yeah, but they have arrived, and then we get the spooky spiders. Or, well, no, they fix the bird. First. Yeah, and that's like a very big scene, especially if you're reading it for the first time and yeah. you don't know what's coming. Because as a kid, you don't quite pick up on that. I feel like as a kid, it would have been more crazy, but I was like, oh, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. It's not like a real bird. Obviously. <laughs> so Alana's also got magic, and like she and Anua and her like trope of knights are like trying in a tent with the bird trying to fix him and they can't fix him. And I thought this was super cool. Uh, they asked Dane to come into the tent and Dane makes the comment, oh, why is the bird sitting on a man-sized cot? Okay, Dane. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. All right, readers, you get where we're going with this, huh? And so Alana asks Dane, like, can you, how did you find him in the first place? How did you find him in the marsh? Can you do that again? Try calling his name. And they say, oh, call for Numer Salmalin, or however you say his last name. I love the fact that Dane is still like, why does this bird have like a full last name? Why does he have friends who are knights and stuff? But it's, it's like, okay. girl. But it's such a like genuine 13 year old, yeah. like they're just existing. Uh -huh. <laughs> so she like turns her back and like does her little mental like listening. She hears the bird. I, yeah, this was all a little bit hazy, oh, but I, I think it was supposed to be a little hazy. <laughs> And there's like a flash of light and she turns around just in time to see Anua like pull a sheet over a gigantic <laughs> naked man. Um, yep. And Dane's like, where'd the bird go? <laughs> it's like, girl, you, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the camp is now plus one sorcerer uh, who is a giant man. And Dane is like. Okay. He's like, <laughs> not just giant, like he's six foot five. Like he's physically yeah. Describe that way. Because um, I'm a tall person, so I've been around other tall people. Like, my stepdad is six foot seven. Holy shit. Yeah. So there is a difference between being like six three, which is just like tall, and six five. Like, six five is the beginning of like, you are a very large man. <laughs> I, one of, mm, yes. I was, I, there was a romantic interest in college who was six foot five, and it was too tall. Yeah. It was too tall for me. Like, mm, Nope. Yep. Nope. That's why you get so grossed out. So I, I feel like readers know, but I'm six foot. Like I'm a big woman. So I always get okay. Kinda... No, no, no. <laughs> Hold on. So she is not a big woman. Okay. So you may be you may be six feet tall, but you're like you're like a graceful six feet tall. I don't know if I'd say graceful because I'm I'm a little thickums. Oh, not my, a lot, no, but you're not. okay. Well, <laughs> well, readers, we do have a video posted. Oh, that's true. Yeah. You can see what Katie. You, you can see what she looks like. It's not. No. Yeah. I. Yeah. I, now I'm embarrassed. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on YouTube. What? <laughs> Sorry. Um, but like I'm six foot. And so it always makes me really uncomfortable when there's like a really extreme height difference between people because it's like I feel weird talking to people that are like five foot you know, three or two, like it you feels like I've been in half to see. <laughs> I know it's like talking to a child. So it's like then to add like a weird romantic lens on it, like there ain't no way. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like six foot five. That's 
that's, that's like tall. That's uncomfortable tall territory. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, like you said, six threes. Mm-hmm. That's like within reasonable ranges for like human height. You're mm-hmm. like, I get it. And then like after that, you're like, that's kind of tall. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so large man. Yeah. And I feel like Dana's just kind of like going with the flow during all of this, though, because she's like, okay, she's a well. little shy and giggly around him, which yeah. Ex- Fair. Yeah, normal for a 13-year-old. Mm-hmm. And basically, they just discover that this is Numer Salahiddin. I don't know what his last name is. I just kind of guessed. That felt right. I don't think it's right, though. We'll go with it. That's fine. <laughs> I don't want to attempt to correct I, it because even my correction is not right. That's so. fair. And he has been, like, forced into uh, – or, like, he transformed into a falcon to get away from this, like, bad guy who kind of pops up periodically. I forgot what his name is, He's though. a lord some Lord thing. of something. So I think Numer was acting as a spy for the king. Yeah. Yeah. Except he tried to get away, and then he couldn't transform back into a human because he got of- poisoned. Yeah, it was poison, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Which is why his eyes looked weird in bird form. Oh, that makes sense. I just read this and you remember more than I... <laughs> Keep in mind, I read it like on repeat as a child. So oh, that's fair. ingrained in my memory. <laughs> You're like, this is in here. <laughs> I'm pointing to my brain. But <laughs> uh, yeah, so he was forced into a falcon. Now he's in his regular body, but he's really tired and worn out. And so they decide that they're going to stay in this little camp with the knights um, for a little bit until he's good enough to continue on and go back to what's the like capital? I don't know. The capital. Yeah. Um, Which is where our gals are going to because they got to drop off all the little ponies. Mm-hmm. Um, Except uh, everything is fine until Dane has another one of these little like what the fuck is in my conscious? There's an nearby. <laughs> yeah, someone is looking at me. <laughs> Except it's equally as horrifying. This is even worse than the storm wings for me. Yeah, because I don't like spiders. Yeah, so she wakes up in the middle of the night, grabs her bow, and is like, okay, I'm going to find whatever's bugging me right now. Yeah. And I thought this was a nice little tidbit. She has like little forest creatures that like creep into her sleeping bag in the middle of the night I because they just want to be nearby her. I'm like, I want a little hedgehog that like just do this. Yeah. <laughs> it's so cute because I think she says that like someone like rips up the bottom of her sleeping bag so they can like scootle in with her. It's like, that's so fucking cute. <laughs> <laughs> like what little girl doesn't like when you're reading a book like this and the, the heroine has an affinity for animals, like what little girl doesn't want to be surrounded by cute fluffy little animals and be able to talk to them like this, this heroine would speak to so many young girls mm-hmm. just because of that alone a hundred percent because the second one she has a little squirrel friend that Aww. like wants to fight people i love him <laughs> his name's flicker Aww. and that's because the other thing is they all have like cute little like animal names I, oh. that's, adorable. that's why i love those books so much <laughs> <laughs> except now we get these like nasty ass fucking spiders that have human faces uh. and they're like the size of a dining table you described it perfectly uh. she went with, her, with her bow by herself because that's smart and <laughs> finds a spider Spider with a human head and torso. Yeah, it's like a spy... A uh, spydrin. Yeah, spydrin, because they're like sirens, but fucked up spiders. And they have like lime green neon web things that Absolutely are poisonous. Absolutely no fucking way. Because I, uh, did you, Toy Story? The little like weird spy... <gasps> That's what I imagine. Oh, I just got triggered. <laughs> yeah, the like freaky spider with the like baby head on yeah. it. <laughs> that's exactly what I, oh yep. my God. Yeah, don't like this. That's, that's what she's fighting. I feel traumatized. The size of a car, like a tiny Honda Civic. <laughs> <laughs> a tiny Honda Civic. <laughs> it's our co-worker's car. Yep, yeah. Oh my god! But then um, she's like kind of going, doing decent things, and then Alana kind of comes up and helps, and she's like, "Damn girl, you know like how to defend yourself." And you're like, "Oh my god, it's Alana!" (laughs) Yeah, that is the right mentor figure. Alana's like, "You got this." Ah, it's so good, and that's kind of it. And it kind of like alludes into the like overarching theme throughout the series is that. Um, the immortals were like hoisted away until the divine realm. Yeah, the like God realm. Um, except for one reason or another, all of a sudden they're kind of like sneaking through. Yeah. So these creatures haven't been seen for like hundreds of years in this universe, mm-hmm. and now they're everywhere. And yep. They're scary. And Alana's kind of like irritated. She's like, "Yeah, we were fighting some like ogres earlier or something." <laughs> She's like, "I'm really fucking tired of this, and it's been like a week." Yeah. <laughs> And that's all that really yeah. happens in this first part. They go back to camp and that's it. And they set off to the capital. Yep. Yeah. Once Numer is uh, able to not die while walking. Yeah. And then they get to the capital. 
And we're going to stop there because <laughs> we ranted for like 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, we, we meant to cover more in this episode and we just couldn't. There was too much to talk about. So join us next time for part two. Uh-huh. Part two of the first book. Yes. We are bussing through this. <laughs> <laughs> From our shelf to yours. I'll see you on the next page. <laughs> Hi, readers. If you'd like to help us pick our next book, send us a message on Instagram. Or if you'd like to just listen, we post new episodes every Monday and Wednesday on Spotify, Apple, and Amazon. Thanks for listening. Bussin'. <laughs>We came back and in the break, Katie went and found something fascinating to me. I love Reddit. <laughs> there is everything you could possibly ever need to find on Reddit. Also things you probably don't want to find. But so what we're talking about is there is in Tamara Pierce's like Facebook um, like group or whatever. There was someone who had posted about this, you know, icky kind of relationship and it making her uncomfortable. And Tamara Pierce responded and basically the sum of it was that she wanted to write a book, uh, or not that she wanted to, but she studied medieval times. So she mapped this relationship, you know, based on the setting that it was based in and, you know, that they didn't have any icky feelings towards each other until she was a little bit older and of an age to marry in this setting. And she got the responses from readers that it made them uncomfortable. And so she doesn't plan on writing anything with that big of an age gap again. And she won't. And she gets it. But she said that, you know, it was appropriate for the setting that she was writing in. Cop out. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that, that is a total cop out because you're one. Point one. You're writing for children. Yes. You're creating a very... Nice fantasy world where no one really dies. That's nope. important. Uh -uh. Also, we have female knights. We have a public education system. We have a queen who wears whatever the fuck she wants and goes off and joins her writers. And like immortal creatures. Yeah. <laughs> and you want to say, oh, because true to medieval setting and historical accuracy, we want this is a completely feasible relationship. Granted. Here we go. I'm going to get on my fucking soapbox. <laughs> I have read so many historical romance novels where the character is 18 and the male lead is like 35. Yeah. That is a big, icky yeah. age gap. It works. It's fine. That's setting appropriate. It happened. Look at Bridgerton, right? If you need more, more context. I think what you and I have focused on is the age gap you can potentially get over. Mm -hmm. Like, sure, setting. Mm -hmm. What makes this wrong is the fact that he's a mentor, he's a teacher, he's an authority figure. Yep. He has like undue influence over her. As she's becoming an adult. She's going from child to adult. And the fact that throughout this book, Tamar Pierce makes several pointed notes to reference Dane when she's like, when it's written from her perspective. Oh, the adults are going off. Mm -hmm. The adults are doing things. Making Dane a child. It's just icky because the same comments can be made for like George R. R. Martin and really like any fantasy book, kind of almost like all of them written by men, but also some women too. <laughs> uh, like you don't have to make it like uh, historically accurate. Like and this clearly is your <laughs> she didn't make it historically accurate. <laughs> no, like this is like your own fantasy land. Like, do you really need to have like the threat of rape be you know present on every single page? Like. It, and just because why? the feelings weren't there, <laughs> yeah. but they just grew into feelings. Yeah. Like, eh. it just feels like a cop out. Like, I don't know. Like, it feels icky. Just like say like, yeah, I probably should not have done that. This was my thinking. I now understand that it's it's kind of gross. You know, I'm not going to do it again. Yeah, because like put yourself in, in like, let's roll reverse here. Mm -hmm. Right. You are 27 and you meet a 13 year old, a 13 year old boy. Bro. I it's even not even like like I can't even conceptualize that. No, and even ten years later, one would hope that if you meet a child and you're a formative figure in that child's life, you're gonna continuously look at that person as like a child type entity. Yeah, just because that's 
like the nature of your relationship. Because I mean, that's what people say all the time. They're like, wow, I remember when you were in diapers running around. Yeah. So it's like, even from the adult perspective, like sometimes it's hard to make that shift of like, wow, they're an adult now making decisions. But like they're like, forever going to be a child in their minds. Yeah. So Numer should always have looked at Dane as a child yes. because that was their relationship. And so a baby sister, like, yeah. I cannot imagine meeting a 13 year old as an adult with like adult friendships and relationships and then three years go by and Ain't oh no look and now it's an adult way <laughs> like, Ain't no way the, not a single no just no gross yeah. and so let's mm. take the age thing out of it right yeah. let's say Numer wasn't her mentor and her teacher he was just a like, 25 year old dude who is like adjacent to all the other main characters in her life sure yeah. I'll, I can accept that yeah that's fine I don't like it, but whatever. Because mm -hmm. even, and that's the part that like kind of confuses me is like, if this is your world, like why didn't you just create a character that doesn't have these problems? Like you know, that's what has always confused me is like, you're writing this, like just write something different. <laughs> like, what? like if you wanted, like, you could still have had this and just made it less icky. He could still be her teacher. She could still be like a young adult. Yeah. Or even like have like a gap in time where they're not teacher relation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like have her have some different teacher for like three or four years and then she comes back and it's like, oh, we're not really teacher student anymore. Like we're friends and then something happens. But like I feel like there needs to be a very definitive like – I am no longer a person with authority over you. But even then, it still feels icky because there's still that, like, historical, like, you can't just, like, ignore that. Like, you're there, that person is still going to have influence over your decisions as, like, an authority figure. It's not like that goes away. So it's just... Ugh. Especially because Dane is so dependent on everyone around her for, like, food and housing and education and everything in her life. She has nowhere to go except the people she's surrounded by, including Numer. <sighs> I feel like that's a good segue. Yeah. So I, I know we were going to start with, you know, describing what actually happens in the story. Now we're getting to that point. So <laughs> we just, that was too good of a find. Yeah. I, cause ugh, that's why I love fucking Reddit sometimes with this book stuff. Cause you get it from the author. Yeah. So check out our show notes. We'll link the authors. Uh, I'm assuming it's a true link, like, uh, or at least a. It's like a Reddit thread. Yeah. Well, screenshots. So, you know, it's like legit. Yeah. So check no, out the Reddit thread. Screenshots. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> but I, I kind of hope our readers get as angry as we did. Yeah. In that response. Or even if you don't get angry, like you have a conversation with the people in your lives. Because mm -hmm. I mean, like I feel like sometimes we shy away from talking about like controversial things. Mm -hmm. But this is something like have an opinion, talk to your partner, see what their opinions are. Like especially if you're, you know, you have kids. Like this is something that like people should talk about, and you can get mad or not get mad, but like. It's worth talking about at the very least, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Conversation starters. We'll make cards. 